All right, we're gonna kind of have a shootout today. I have a bunch of uh, op amps lined up here. Um, I'm doing this for a particular reason. I'll show you why later. Um, there is something on op amps um, called slew rate. How fast can the output change? And a lot of times it's limited by a particular um, part of the, of the uh, circuit. And when I say circuit, I'm talking about the internals of the, uh, of the actual design. Let me uh, find a, an example here. This is an LM358, and this capacitor right here adjusts the slew rate. How fast will the output change? And uh, there's a current here, and that current runs through this capacitor. And a current in a capacitor is a straight line. It charges that capacitor as a straight line. So a lot of the slews that you see on op amps will be basically a linear straight line, okay? So if you take a look at a data sheet, sometimes it actually has a, a, a line that talks about slew rate. Many times it doesn't. Uh, here's an example. This one doesn't talk about it in the numbers, but it shows a graph. And it calls it the voltage follower pulse response so uh, they have it set up in a one-to-one -one voltage follower and they're putting a, a three volt step into it and anyway they're looking at the output here so they're kind of cheating here too it's about a half a volt to three volt step and they're getting this uh, pulse response on the output so this is input output so the output is slew rate limited it's it's this line here due to that charging of the capacitor slew, slew rate limited and we can kind of read the graph here and we can kind of look at the setup and everything. And we're at about five microseconds. It takes about five microseconds for that thing to go up. So I've put it in an LM358 and I've looked and there we go. There's about a five millisecond rise time. The uh, divisions are five milliseconds per, uh, uh, per division and it take, takes about one division for it to go up, right? So, um, step response but it's slew, slew rate limited okay so that is one particular device now let's uh let's go ahead and uh, rearrange things a bit we're going to take a look at one particular type of device compared to another particular type of device okay so uh, give me a second I'll, I'll rearrange everything all right so we are going to be using my board here we're going to be putting one part here to compare against. So this is an LM358. Uh, we'll put some unknown part over here and now we can compare the two. All right. And I need to change the scale on the, on the other one here. There we go. So obviously this one is much faster than that one. Okay. There's a little bit of funny business going on up there on the top. A little bit of a ski slope there on the on that top. All right. So um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and um, change the part again. Let's remember this one. Uh, reference. I want to remember channel two. All right. So when I remove the part, it stays there so we can see two of them. Okay. Let's put in our next part. And, uh, oh, it looks like he's a little bit faster. All right. So there we go. It's a little bit faster. All right. Let's go to another part. Uh, a little bit faster, My hands out of the circuit. There we go. So a little bit faster and we'll go to this one here. Oop. Almost dropped him on the floor. Let's go to this one here and he is the fastest. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and put him you can see the LM358 is a super, super slow part. So let's just take him out of the equation. Let's, let's just get rid of him because he's just way, way too slow to be comparing parts against, okay? 
So we're going to compare everything against this one. So let me turn off ref. Okay. So this will be our new gold standard. Okay. Uh, we'll go to this one. And it's just a slight, slightly bit, a slightly bit slower. So we can now zoom in better on these things. Okay. So what are these parts? Okay. Well, the gold standard here is the uh, JRC5532. The 5532 has this really nice step response, a uh, very fast step response. The part that I'm comparing it to in blue is the uh, JRC4562, another popular part. A little bit slower. Okay. Now we're going to be going to the JRC4556. Uh, this is a 70 milliamp part, so lots and lots of drive. So he's, he's definitely slew rate limited because he has a big output section where he has to crunch lots of current 70 milliamps. So yeah, so he's slew rate limited on the back side. And then we'll go to this part. And this part is, where's my magnifying glass? This is a, a JRC four five five eight. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the claim to fame is of four 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 five five eight, but that's that's that one. Okay. All right. So we can see that uh, one of the reasons that the JRC five five three two is such a popular op amp in um, in audio is because it can take these fast edges and reproduce them. Right. So it's not going to throw away any bandwidth in your circuit. So very, very fast. Let's uh, go ahead and get a part that we know about. Here's a, TL, uh, uh, a TL082. TL082s are very fast as well, and they're much better controlled. So if you're worried about that little bit of ringing there, you might like the, uh, the TLC072082. Uh, it's the same part. Um, so that's why these are very, 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 very popular as well. They, they have very fast edges, but a little bit of roll off at the top end. So they, they'll have a little bit of roll off at very, very high frequencies, but otherwise they're a very, very fast part. So they're, they're, they're definitely my favorite part. All right. For this very reason is that they're super fast, super easy to use and no bringing, no anything. They're just very, very clean part. I like it. All right. So that's that one. Now the reason that I was doing all these tests in the in the garage before I turned the camera on was uh, for this particular part. And uh, you can see that this particular part is just as fast as the 5532 with zero ringing. Um, you would say, look at that, that's the perfect op amp. That's the perfect op amp. I want to buy more of those. All right. So, uh, how am I going to show this? I'm going to have to put it under my, under my, uh, mag, uh, microscope to photograph it. Let me, all right, let's go back down here. Okay. So this is the part, the superstar here. All right. And, uh, is that guy getting warm? No, not right. Um, okay. I'm going to get out my, uh, get out my ah, let me change lenses let me change lenses that's better let me do that just a second all right this is the part let me it 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 has a, a difficult to see marking so i'm going to use a flashlight to see if we can see that marking and uh i hope you can i hope you can see that i know the exposure is going to be a bit funny let me see if i can if i can re-expose re the camera here um it is an LM358. <laughs> uh, it is an LM358. Now, what do we know about LM358s? They're super, 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 super slow. Uh, it was the worst of the whole bunch, except this particular LM358 is the best of the bunch. The very, very best. Um, so what is going on? All right, so what is going on? Um, when I was doing my testing of my fake 072s, I uh, became aware that they were probably LM358s. And so I had a whole bunch of LM358s in my, uh, in, in my little box here. And I went through those to find true brand name parts and um, 
And they were all brand name parts that I had. I had national parts and some other parts. Um, and then I had a handful, about, mm, about 10 parts that were marked TI LM358s. Now, they were laser etched, which is quite unusual, especially for a vintage part. They didn't laser etch those parts. And so, and, and if, you, if you take a look at these parts, they have a very um, dull top surface, like somebody sandpapered the top of them or sandblasted the top of them anyway. I think these were remarked. Whatever they were, they were sandblasted and then laser etched to be LM358s. And so you grab whatever part you have on hand you have an order, okay? Somebody ordered some LM358s. Okay, great. Here, let's make some LM358s. They laser etch them and then they sell them. Well, the dye that they used, probably some weird dye. There's a, about 13 weird Chinese dyes floating around the market. Um, whichever one they chose was just a superstar. <laughs> it was just a superstar. Here, let's put him back in the, uh, put him back in the circuit here and, uh, marvel at its abilities <laughs> yeah look at that that's just that's just great i want more of those but i have no idea what it is there's no way for me to uh there's no way for me to tell what that is um but it looks nice i don't know if it fails any other parameters but for slew rate man that's what i want that's what i want my op amp to do <laughs> Anyway, I have to, I guess, save those for a special purpose. They're my, quote, LM358s from, from heaven. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where this came from.